in this video we will learn about the temple architecture in india from the ancient times till the modern date so as we can see here temple architecture is a representation of ideals of dharma and values dharma values etc tradition culture heritage history all these are represented by temple architecture so the first temples were rock cut caves as humans did not have that much architectural specifications and architectural personalities as well as technique to build temples from concrete or other methods wooden methods so they were rock cut in first place rock cut caves and the oldest temples are the barabar caves 3rd century bc and uh, now the architectural principles of hindu temples we will look at the architectural principles of hindu temples are described in shilp shastra so the principles uh, which uh, through which which are followed in building the temples are described in the shilp shastra that is the architectural principle so in the northern style it is the nagara style uh, through which the temples are built in the southern style it is the dravida style and there is also a mixed style of temple architecture known as vesara style so the classical temples the temples which were built up to 7th 8th century ce are known as classical temples and medieval are from 12th to 13th century ce so all these are medieval temples and after that there are the modern temples so now let's at look at the different styles of temple buildings so first we'll look look on to the nagara style and first we'll look at the different parts of the temples what are the different parts of the temple architecture what are the different parts of the temples and which are common in all the temples and then we will look at the different types of styles so the first one is the garbhagri it is the womb house that is it houses the main deity of the temple in earlier times it was a small cubicle with one entrance in later period it grew into a large chamber so garbhagri is a small was a earlier times was a small cubicle but now nowadays it is a large chamber and it houses the main deity then there is the mandap it is the entrance to the temple a portico or columnated hall then there is the shikhar or viman vimana uh, it is noticed from 5th century ce uh, that the shikhar or viman has been built it is a mountain like sphere on top so mountain like structure on top north india shikhar and curving in shape north india shikhar is curving in shape and in south india it is pyramidical and called viman so uh, north india the shikhar is curving in shape that is the mountain like structure on top of the garbhagri is curving in shape and it is known as shikhar and in the south india it is known as vimana it should be clear to you and these are all short notes it, it will be helpful to you during your mains preparation then there is the amalak which is the stone like disc seen at the top of the temple so many temples many temples in india have the amalak and many other temples also don't have the amalak but uh, it is a stone like disc seen at the top of the temple then there is the kalash topmost part of the temple and antaral antaral is the vestibule vestibule, vestibule between the garbhagri and the mandapa it is a narrow passage between the garbhagri and the mandapa which is known as the antaral then there is the jagati it is a raised platform where devotees can sit and pray so it is a raised platform uh, which uh, in, in which devotees can sit and pray so jagati is also a very important part of the indian temples and then there is the vahana vehicle of the main deity placed axially so vahana like different gods have their different vahanas on which uh, on which they arrive or Uh, which which follows them so it is a hindu culture it is in hindu culture different gods have their own vahanas and which is the main vehicle of the deity and it is placed axially to the uh, main deity of the temple and it is also a very important part of the hindu temples so now we will move on to the nagara or north indian temple architecture 
so we will see what nagara style holds how what type of architecture it is and how it is different first we'll let see about the nagara style of temple architecture and then we will differentiate it from the other styles and so let let's see so nagara so does it does not have an elaborate elaborate boundary wall and entrance so nagara temples don't have an elaborate wall boundary wall and does not have an elaborate entrance no water tank inside the temple premises pradakshina path is covered so the main features of the nagara style are it does not have any boundary wall elaborate boundary wall and entrance and there is no water tank inside the temple premises no water tank is present and pradakshina path which is through on which the devotees go round around the main deity it is not inside the garbhagri but outside the garbhagri there is a pradakshina path on which the deities go around the, on which the devotees go around the deity as a symbol of respect and uh, religion so uh, to offer respect to the deity and so it is also covered in nagara style of temples so garbhagri is located under the tallest tower it is one of the features of nagara style that garbhagri garbhagri which is the main shrine and the womb house will be located under the tallest tower now classification of nagara architecture so we will look at the classification of nagara architecture now so the most simple and most common square first one is latina so it is the simple and most common square at the base and walls curved or uh, upward or to the top mainly used to house the garbhagri so in latina style it is the most simple and most common style of nagara style and it is square at the base and the walls of the shikhar curve or curve to when they go upwards and curve when they go upwards towards the top so mainly it is used to house the garbhagri later on they grew complex and instead of appearing like a single tower the temple began to support many small towers and clustered towers so after a few years or after after few hundred or 50 years uh, after the nagara style had been deciphered or discovered not deciphered discovered uh, the temple construction had begun the nagara style grew complex and then they the they, first there was only a garbhagri and the in the latina style but after that it grew complex the temple temple design grew complex and instead of appearing like single tower the temple began to support many small towers and clustered towers also so together like running a mountain so like a running mountain they supported many towers and so like clustered towers and began to support many towers uh, but the tower of the garbhagri was the tallest one so now we will look at the second type which is famasana type it is broader and shorter than the latina or rekha prasad latina type is also known as rekha prasad type so there is two there are two names for latina type latina and rekha prasad so you will have to remember this uh, it will be very important in case of prelims then the second one is uh, second one is famasana type now it is broader and shorter than latina so from first feature of famasana is that it is broader and shorter than latina temples and roof is composed of several slabs and that gently use a single point over the center of the building and they do not curve inwards and used for mandapas in many places so famasana type is broader and shorter than the latina type of temples roof is composed of several slabs that is one slab above the other is there in the famasana type of temples in the uh, we can see we can say in the shikhar of the temple the in the shikhar of the temple there is is composed of one slab above the other that gently rise to a single point over the center of the building they, they do not curve inwards they gently rise over the uh, building and center of the building and they do not curve inwards like in the latina type and sometimes it is used for mandapas in many places in the temples also but it is mainly used for garb garbhagri only in famsana type now the third one is vallabhi type these are rectangular rectangular buildings with a roof that rises into the vaulted chamber 
that is uh, these are rectangular buildings with a roof that rises into a vaulted chamber there is a vaulted chamber above in the form of a roof there is a vaulted chamber the la the large uh, the the vaulted chamber is round like a bamboo or wooden wagon of bullock so the there is the rectangle the, the in the wallabi type of temple the building is in rectangular shape and there is a roof that rises into a vaulted chamber above the main main construction of the temple and uh, the vaulted chamber is round like a bamboo or a wooden wagon of bullock so it is like it is like a closed wooden wagon of bullock above the rectangular building so all these were types of nagara style of nagara style of architecture of temples first one was latina second was one one was phamsana and third one was vallabhi type now we look at the classification based on geographical distribution so classification based on geographical distribution so in central india there is the khajuraho type of temples which are north or east facing now we'll, we first we have looked at the nagara style of temples according to architectural styles that is that is latina or rekha prasad famsana and vallabhi now we'll do the classification based on geographical distribution so first one is the central india so it is known as khajuraho style also so the temples are north or east facing and interior and exterior walls were lavishly decorated with carvings with carvings interior and exterior walls both were lavishly decorated with carvings and sculptures were erotic temples were made of sandstone and had three chambers the garbhagri the mandap and the ardh mandap so sculptures were very erotic in these temples and they were made of mainly of sandstone and had three chambers garbhagri mandap and ardh mandap so these were the temples of northern temples of central india now the panch panch ratna style was followed that is architectural style in which panch yatna style that is the architectural style in which main shrine is built on a rectangular plinth and four surrounding shrines at the four courts so the in in panchratna style panchayatna style of temples it is also second style of temples it, it, it this style was followed in uh, the central india also and the, in this style of temple there is the main temple in the center and there are four other four other temples at the four corners of the main shrine so architects this is a type of architectural st style in which main shrine is built on a rectangular plinth and four subsidiary shrines at the four corners for example kandhariya mahadev temple built on high platform lux uh, and then there is the chausat yogini temple also so kandariya mahadev temple built on high platform and the chausat yogini temple are examples of panchayatna style of temple i cannot show the figures of these temples in this video because these are short notes but if you want the figures also to be shown you can comment and i can post it in a different different video all these the figures of all these temples mainly and you can also comment if you find that these notes are very informational and very useful then i will keep on uploading more notes i have combined these notes through various websites as well as uh, different the notes of different coaching centers as well as my notes so all these are very in, if you find these notes informational then please comment on the video and please let me know so that i can upload more notes and which will be helpful to you now we will move further now we will move on to the solanki school or we will move move on to the solanki school in northern india so this st style of temple was solanki school it was also known as maru gurjara style 
so it is also a north indian style so lanki style of temples or maru gurjara style of temples so it is present it it is uh, this style is present in gujarat rajasthan and western madhya pradesh it is gujarat rajasthan and western madhya pradesh uh, follow this style of temples mainly uh, so common common stone used in build uh, common stone used in building these temples are sandstone and black basalt so jain temples in mount abu modhara sun temple in gujarat are examples of so lanki school or maru gurjara style these are very famous temples jain temple in mount abu and modhara sun temple in gujarat especially these are made from sandstone and black basalt now in east india the style followed was kalinga or odisha style or kalinga or odisha school of temples so the main medium to build these temples were terracotta that is they were built from terracotta like terracotta burnt bricks they were built from terracotta that is burnt bricks or bricks made from burnt mud so it was the main medium for building the temples of east india kalinga or odisha school so this these were present these are mainly present in assam and bengal important regional schools in this area so we can see that according to the classification of the northern style there are many schools so first one is the khajuraho style or north india khajuraho style or central india second one is panchayatna style third one is the western style solanki school or maru gurjara style fourth one is east india kalinga or odisha school and fifth one is assam and bengal school style which is important regional schools in this area example kamakya in odisha sikhars are known as rekha duels in odisha so in odisha style the sikhars are known as rekha duels and not sikhars so it is a type of name so you can remember that in odisha the sikhars are known as rekha duels in odisha and the example of this style as sun temple in konark it is a unesco world heritage site also known as black pagoda as it as it appears black from the sea and it was also used for navigation during the portuguese and british period so it is known as black pagoda it is a unesco world heritage site then the jagannath puri temple in uh, puri jagannath temple in puri is also made in the kalinga or orissa style and many other temples also like we can see Uh, these this temple was built sun temple in konark was uh, built by uh, on a, by the king choda ganga of the ganga dynasty right so it is a very famous temple and in assam and bengal regions there are there were many types of temples many temples were built but the most of the temples uh, did not are uh, the remains of most of the temples are left and most of the temples are not fully able to withstand were not fully able to withstand the stand of withstand the stand of time and uh, were demolished or were uh, e e eroded or destruct dist were destroyed during the calamities or uh, by weathering so uh, some of the temples are left like the kamakya temple <clears throat> so like this Mm, the jagannath puri temple is also a part of the kalinga style or odisha school or odisha school and the uh, sun temple of konark which is the unesco world heritage site is also a part of the east india kalinga or odisha school now we will look at the hilly regions of garhwal kumau and himachal pradesh and kashmir so these are also so these are also parts of north indian style so it is the after after the central india it is the khajuraho style then panchayatna style then the north india or solanki school or maru gurjara style then east india kalinga odisha school assam and bengal school the hilly regions are known as garhwal garhwal kuma kumao himachal or kashmir kashmir style of temples so these style of temples are present in takshila peshawar and northwest frontier both buddhist and hindu traditions began to intermingle in these types of temples they are wooden buildings with pitched roof and main garbhagriha made in latina latina type 
so these these are made mainly from wooden wood and these are wooden buildings with pitched roof and garbgri made in uh, latina type so latina type of garbgri is made in latina style that is curved upwards example karkota period karkola karkota period in kashmir padre padre padrethan temple lakshna devi temple mandir and uh, jageshwar in almora district so these are the uh, temples of hilly region that is garhwal kumao himachal and kashmir school pandrethan lakshna devi and pandrethan lakshna devi and jagesh and jageshwar temple in almora so now we'll move further we'll move on to the south india that is the dravida style of temples now i will we'll move on to dravida style of temples and we will see that this style of temple architecture emerged in south india and sri lanka during the 7th to 16th century ce so it is a very long period in which it emerged so now we look at the features of this dravida style of temple and we will look to differentiate it with the uh, nagara style so these are built not built on raised platform first of all nagara style of temples were built on raised platform but ravida style of temples are not built on raised platform then it it is they are enclosed by a compound wall whereas nagara, nagara style of temples were not enclosed by a compound wall front wall has a gateway that is gopura it is known, known as gopuram but in case of nagara style there was there was no entrance for, entrance or gateway so the front wall has a gateway that is gopuram it is known as gopuram then viman that is the stepped pyramid so viman is known as in these types of temple viman uh, the viman is known as uh, viman is uh, is in place of shikhar and it is known as it is made up of stepped pyramidal structure then shikhar crowning element which is in in the in the you have to remember this guys it is very important point then that in case of dravida or south indian style of temple viman is the shikhar that is viman is the uh, mountain type of structure which is placed above the garbhagri i cannot show you the figure here and the in in place of the disk that is that was known as i will say, i will show you in place of the amalak that is stone like disk seen at the top of the temple there is the shikhar crowning element which is a small stupika or octagonal cupola so similar to the amalak or kalash so viman is the stepped pyramidal mountain structure and shikhar is the crowning element which is similar to amalak or kalash and it is also which is a small stupika or octagonal cupola now we will <coughs> look at the uh, now at the at the gates that is the gopurams there were fears dwarpals or door keepers so these were the door keepers which were fears in nature which were made at the gopurams to protect the temples then there was water reservoir or temple tank inside the temple which was not present in the uh, water reservoir or temple tank was not present in the north indian style that is the nagara style but it was present in the dravida style of temples so this is also a difference then subsidiary shrines are incorporated uh, inside within the main temple tower so subsidiary shrines are also there within the main temple tower this is also a difference then rich administrative centers they they became these temples became rich admin in south india these temples became rich administrative centers controlling vast areas of land and the priests became very rich and controlled and due to the social dogmas rituals sacrifices practices and and all these uh, things the priests held a very strong position in the society and they could persuade people to do anything in the name of religion so the temples became rich administrative centers controlling vast areas of land then there is the there is the division in case of dravida style of temples that is the first one is square type that is the kutta type the square type second one is second one is katurasara 
शला टाइप आयत आयत शरा टाइप रेक्टेंगुलर टाइप गज और पृष्ठ टाइप और वृतायता और एलिफेंट बैग्ड एलिप्टिकल देन वृता इज सर्कुलर सो दीज आर द डिविजन्स इन द द्राविडा टाइप ऑफ टेम्पल्स दैट इज इफ देर इज स्क्वायर इफ इट इज स्क्वायर इट इज नोन एज कटुरासरा इफ इट इज शल देन इट इज नोन एज अयताशरा इफ इट इज रेक्टेंगुलर If it is square, it is known as kuta. Then katurasara is known as shell. Ayataashara is known as rectangular. Gaj prist or vrita ayata or elephant bag is known as elliptical, and vrita is circular. So these types of divisions are there in the uh, South Indian temple styles. That is kuta is square, katurasara or shell is. Uh, कुर्ता स्क्वायर और कटुरासरा शल इज अयताशरा और रेक्टेंगुलर और गज पृष्ठ और वृतायता और एलिफेंट बैग्ड एलिप्टिकल वृता इज सर्कुलर नाउ पल्लवास स्टाइल सो दीज डिविजन आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दिस दैट इज कुर्ता स्क्वायर और कटुरासरा शला अयताशरा और रेक्टेंगुलर गज पृष्ठ और वृतायता और एलिफेंट बैग्ड This is also known as elliptical and Vrita is circular. So now Pallava style temples. These are all South Indian style. So Pallava has made this type of temples. So Pallava style of temples. It was active in Andhra region from second century CE and moved southwards to settle in Tamil Nadu. So Pallava style of temples was active in Andhra region from second century CE. It was being built from Andhra in Andhra region from second century CE and moved southwards to settle in Tamil Nadu. Mainly Shaivites, but mainly Vaishnavite shrines also survived. Many many Shaivites, but mainly Vaishnavite shrines survived. They were influenced by the Buddhist history of Deccan. Earlier temples were rock cut and later were structured. Earlier buildings attributed to the reign of Mahendra Varman one. so these pallava style of temples were influenced by the buddhist history of deccan earlier temples were rock cut and later were structured and early buildings attributed to the reign of mahendra varman one which was a very famous king of the pallava dynasty so these pallava style was mainly found in andhra region in second century ce and then moved southward to settle in tamil nadu mainly they consisted of both shaivite and vaishnavite temples but vaishnavite shrines were the only ones which have survived so now pulakesin 2 of karnataka narsimha varman 1 one of mamalapuram mahabalipuram short bulkesing 2 of karnataka also built these types of temples narsimha varman 1 also built these types of temple pallava style and uh, or mamalapuram he was also known as mamalapuram or uh, he built the mahabalipuram short temple of mahabalipuram was built uh, built by narsimha varman 2 or raj simha facing east towards the sea there were three shrines in this temple short temple of mahabalipuram which was built by narsimha varman 2 or raj simha it was facing east towards the sea and it had three shrines first one was a shiva shrine face in the east then in the middle it was the vishnu shrine and then in the west again it was a shiva shrine so it had three shrines east shiva west shiva and middle vishnu and it faced east towards the sea so this is the short temple at mahabalipuram which was built by narsimha varman 2 or raj simha so now evidence of a water tank and nandi is present on the walls of this temple it is it has been disfigured due to salt water laden air so there is also an evidence of a water tank in this temple mahabalipuram temple and nandi is also present on the walls but uh, the temple has been disfigured due to water laden air moisture laden air due to erosion now classification pallava temple architecture so mahendra varman group 600 to 625 ad earlier temples of pallava belong to mahendra varman one so there is classification in the pallava types of temple architecture also so we we know about the pallava type of temple architecture 
which had developed in Andhra region from 2nd century CE and moved southwards to settle in Tamil Nadu. But uh, there is also a classification in Pallava temple architecture and we know the famous temples in the in case of Pallava temple architecture also but there is a classification in Pallava temple architecture so first one is Mahendravarman group 600 to 625 AD early temples they built the early temples of Pallavas and belong uh, and it belongs to Mahendravarman 1 till 7th century CE Ro these were rock cut temples influenced by rock cut architecture these are Mahendra Vadi temples, Trichura Palli temples. So these are Mahendra Vadi temples and Trichura Palli temples. So these are the temples built by Mahendra Varman 1. These are Pallava kind, Pallava temple. They are built on Pallava temple architecture. The Mahendra Vadi temple and the Trichura Palli temple. Then second one, Narsimha or Mamala group. So the second group is Narsimha or Mamala group. It belong, it, it, it is uh, from 625 to 674 AD. So it in this Narsimha Varman 1 was the king and monolithic rocks, ruts or mandaps were made in these kinds of temple. So these type of temples were built by mo in monolithic rocks and ruts and mandapas were also built in these types of temples. So the first one which was built by Mahendra Varman group which, which was built by Mahendra Varman 1 they are all a kind of Pallava temple, but in the Pallava temple, these are the classifications. First one is Mahindravarman group. They are early rock cut temples. Second one, like Mahindravadi temple and Trichurapalli temple. Second one is Narsimhavarman 1 group. These are uh, Narsimhavarman 1 or uh, Mamala group, 625 to 674 AD. It is built by Narsimhavarman 1. They, they are built on monolithic rocks, Rathas or Mandapas. Then the third one is Rajasimha group. 674 to 800 AD. These are built by Narsimha Varman 2. Structure temples and Gopura styles. So Rajasimha group 674 to 800. Third, third type is Rajasimha group 674 to 800 AD. These are built by Narsimha Varman 2. These are structural temples and Gopura style temples. Examples show temple at Mahabalipuram which are built by Narsimha Varman 2 or Rajasimha from 674 to 800 AD, Shore Temple at Mahabalipuram, Kalashnath Temple at Kanchi. Then the fourth one is Nandi Varman group. So the first one is, you have to remember this guys, very important. In from prelims point of view, Mahendra Varman group, then comes the Narsimha group or Mamala group, then Raj Simha group, Narsimha Varman 2 group, and then the Nandi Varman group, 800 to 900 AD. These were structural temples and were small compared to other temples, other groups. It, they were small compared to other groups, but they were structural in, structural temples. And so all these were type of Pallava temples. Now we'll move forward. Forward then there is the Chola style, which was which was built was built by Imperial Cholas. The Imperial Cholas belong to South India and they built, built the temples during 875 to 1175 AD. So example are uh, Vijayalaya Choli Swara Temple, Brahma, Brahma Puri Swara Temple, etc. So Vijayalaya Choli Swara Temple, Brahma Puri Swara Temple or examples are of Chola style. The most famous, ex famous example is Brihadeshwar Temple at Tanjore or Raja, Raja Rajeshwar Temple built by Raja Raja Chola which is largest and tall, tallest of all Indian temples. It is pyramidical multi-storied Viman. It has a pyramidical multi-storied Viman. The main deity of this temple is Shiva. It has painted murals, two large Gopurams, gateway towers, and it is a, also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So, as we can see here, the Chola style, it, it was built by Imperial Cholas in 875 in South India in between 875 to 1175 AD. So the for example are Vijayalaya Choliswara Temple, Brahma Puriswara Temple and uh, the two famous one are 11th century. Large temp in 11th century, large temples were built. The two famous examples are Brihadeshwar Temple at Tanjore uh, and Raja Rajeshwara Temple built by Raja Raja Chola which is the largest and ta tallest of all Indian temples. So you have, you have to remember this that the Rajeshwara, Raja Rajeshwara Temple is the largest and tallest of all temples. It has a pyramidical multi-storied Viman and the main deity of this temple is Shiv. It has painted murals and two large Gopurams gateway towers and it is also a unesco world heritage site 
now we'll move on to the vesara or mixed style of temples it became popular after mid 7th century ce it hybridized it is a hybridized form of temples and contains nagara plus dravida architecture style both the styles are mixed here that is nagara style as well as dravida architecture style the feature it the features of this temple are its emphasis on viman and mandapa so open ambulatory passageway pillars doorways ceilings were intricately carved so pass ambulatory passageways pillars doorways ceilings all were intric intricately carved and it had it has it had much more emphasis it gave much more emphasis to viman and mandap so earlier they were rock cut temples but later they became structural so in in the case they these were built by vesara type of temples mixed style of temples were made, made by chalukyas built by chalukyas the main main examples are ravan fadi cave temple a whole temple in karnataka and then pulakesin one western chalukya kingdom around badami made many temples then earlier rock cut later structural these temples were earlier rock cut and later structural so Pulakes in one western of the western Chalukya kingdoms made many temples of this style around Badami, and the main temples are Ravan Fadi Cave Temple and a whole Karnataka Temple. They were the earlier rock cut temples. Then the uh, important sculpture uh, our Nataraj placed in the inside these temples was Nataraj. It is a form of Shiv, and Lad Khan Temple. It is it is a form of Shiv temple in fifth century CE. Were made in Vesara style. So now we'll move at now the Durga temple at Ahol Karnataka was made in 7th and 8th century CE and it is also of uh, Vesara style mixed style. Now we'll move on to the Hosala dynasty. So the city of victory or Vijayanagar empire was built by the Hosala dynasty in 4th century CE. So they, they were also a they were they also built many temples in Vijayanagar Empire or Vijayanagar city, which was built or in built on Vesara style of temple architecture or mixed style of temple architecture. Vijayanagar is also known as city of temples. So now we'll move on to Buddhist temples. So, so Mahabodhi temple near Bodh Gaya, mixture of Nagara or Dravida style. It is a mixture of both Nagara and Dravida style uh, style and use the shikhar the shikhar rises up but not in a curved manner but in a pyramidical manner like the dravida style tree planted by ashoka the great trees planted inside this temple are made are from uh, by ashoka the great so it, it is buddhist monastery nalanda monastic university is a combination of various buddhist monasteries so it is also made in mixed temple style or vesara style uh, it had been destroyed earlier but now again it has it is being built as a world known university now we will move on to the Jain temples in Bihar, Bihar many Jain temples are formed and in Odisha also Ratnagiri, Elora, Ehol in Karnataka, Shavan Belgola it has a gold it has the statue of a god Lord Bahubali which is 57 feet high and monolithic statue it is so all these are examples of Buddhist temple that is the Mahabodhi temple in Bodh Gaya, which is built in on mixed style that is Vesara style it has a curved curved shikhar uh, it it has a shikhar which rises straight but not, not in a curved manner but in a pyramidical manner like dravida style and trees are planted by ashoka the great then the buddhist monastery nalanda monastic university is a combination of various buddhist monasteries and then the jain temples in bihar jain temples were found odisha in Orisha also Jain temples were found in Ratnagiri, in Elora also Jain temples were found in Ahol in Karnataka, Shavan Belgola had a, has a statue of Lord Bahubali which is 57 feet high and monolithic, monolithic in structure.